Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, so today we're going to talk about how far should you go to protect your code? Awesome, let's do it. Hey everybody, so today we're talking about how far you should go to protect your code and I'm Jackie here with Joe from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, great. Let's talk about this. So how far should you actually go to protect your code? Uh, there is, of course, many ways to look at it, but I'll take the first one here and say there's two main types of thieves, you know, people using it for themselves. And then there's people taking it and selling it or, or somehow sharing it with a bunch of people. And to me, at least, that's two very different scenarios. Because sure, you can try and protect your code against everybody out there. Because if you have something very valuable where people will want to steal it, take it, whatever, and resell it, for a lesser price or whatever, so for profit, they'll probably be willing to go and do quite extensive stuff to manage um, that breaking or cracking or whatever is necessary to get at your code. Whereas people using it for themselves, then either your price point is too high, too steep, whatever, uh, for them to do it. It might also be people intrigued if they can do it, and they'll probably not share it unless you're very um, high profile, so they can actually get some prestige from being the ones who broke it. Yeah, that's awesome, Jackie. I, I would add on to that, which I, I think you did a good job summarizing of the two different types, generally speaking, two different types of groups. and. Their skill sets gen usually are very different. You have one side who probably doesn't know anything about programming and the other side who they, they might know something about programming. But again, depending on this, you know, most people aren't, aren't doing this at a company. They're doing it by themselves. And you and I both know as someone who have, you know, have companies where we sell software and do things, it's more than just selling software, right? It's much more involved than just, copying the code, the whole, you know, when you're going to sell it, the licensing, the marketing, the advertising, all these things, like building your client base. I mean, it's, it's very, very, very involved. So you could spend a lot of time really trying to protect your code, but that I think that's our, our big aha is don't go too crazy trying to protect your code, <laughs> no. right? Um, yes. It doesn't mean you give it away, uh, but you could spend a lot of time, and I, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, Jackie. Like you, you mentioned earlier, you and I were chatting, and you mentioned a bit about, in hindsight, I think you said you you probably would have done a little less. You you did a lot of you put a lot of thought into it initially. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, I I did I did put quite a lot of thought into it, and I tested quite a few methods, and one of or quite a few of the things I ran into was um, trying to. Uh, either encode or obscuricate too much meant that I was losing out on something else. Either I had to use a different version of the compiler or I had to uh, do stuff that made it hard to do the next thing I wanted to do. So to me, it ended up being less than I had originally thought I would do, uh, but it after six years or something, looking back at it now, I could probably still have done even less than what I did. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's really an interesting point. And and to your knowledge, you never once saw anybody, anyone, anywhere hacking, stealing your your stuff, right? No, and that could have, of course, have been the the price point of my my software, or it could have been my user base. It could have been all kinds of stuff. Uh, most people, from my experience in, in my user base, did not have the needed knowledge to probably do it. Uh, but still, there were absolutely people who were probably more knowledgeable than me 
who were users. So it's not to say that they do, didn't exist. They just didn't have that inclination. They they either didn't want to use time on it. They didn't find it worthy or whatever. Um, so so yeah, I'd, I'd say sometimes it might be people wouldn't have a clue how to do the code it or people would be like it's it's probably too involved to even try it they won't even try and use time on it compared to whatever uh, they're already paying to just have it working you know i hadn't thought about it jackie but and i, I think you and i years ago discussed this it's basically like you know we came to the uh, both mutual agreement of it's kind of like having locks on doors, right? The locks are there to keep out 95% of people. The vast, first, you have a big group of people who won't even try it. Hey, there's a door there. I'm not going to try it at all. The, another group of people who will try it and, it, hey, it's locked. Oh, okay. They're not going to do a thing to try to break in, right? That's the vast majority of people right there. Then there's some people who know how to pick a lock and set. And in order for you to make a door secure enough, you know, or your house secure enough to stop people, those people from breaking in, it's, you got to go to crazy extremes, right? And, and that's the whole point of like with this is, look, we're not saying don't do anything. We're just saying do a little, right? Do a little bit of stuff. And here we have a couple of recommendations of, of what to do. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start off with the first one? Um, I, I'd say don't don't give it away, right? Don't don't have it in plain text or or in descriptions or something like that, right? Try and at least hide it away just a, a little bit, like having a blind on your window or whatever you'd call it. Just make sure it's not just right click, read source code, right? Do just a little. Well, and you said when we were chatting earlier, you were talking about. Don't make the name of your function for licensing, you know, licensing. <laughs> you know, yeah. Call it something a little different. So if someone happens to get the code, they don't just search exactly for that word, right, and, and be able to very, very quickly do it, right? So you're obfuscating yeah. it, but not not so it's so hard that it you now, when you go to maintain your code, it's it's a nightmare. Yeah, with, with, with what we usually use out of hotkey, and, and the way you have at least easy access to um, doing it uh, in uh, your source code is obscurification. To want everything to be uh, A's and B's and C's and D's and not being able to uh, differentiate any of the things in your code. Hmm, probably not, but you'll have the source code of it and the obscurification will be what's out there with people. That's one way of looking at it. You right. could also make sure that your code is structured in a way and your naming convention and stuff like that doesn't just give it away. If for some reason you have someone who's able to actually crack it open. Right. And the next one, which is one you also have mentioned too, is the use, use like, um, uh, a compressor like Impress or something like that. And I, I have a video using both Impress and I think uh, AutoHotkey H to compile your script, which makes it much more secure. It's still, as with anything, right? Yes, I know, someone can crack it, right? It, it always, no matter what you do, pretty much someone, if they try hard enough, they'll crack it. But the vast majority aren't gonna have a clue. You know, the biggest companies in the world, uh, even hardware uh, stuff, it, it ends up being cracked by someone somewhere in the world. And if it's hard enough, they'll actually want to claim to be the ones who cracked it. So find right. that space that hits uh, 95, 98, whatever uh, amounts of people out there. Either you won't get the last two to be interested in your stuff, or if they are, uh, you can probably uh, manage within reason. So yeah, I'd say if, if I go on with the next one is add your own, you know, hidden values, right? Kids, birthdays, stuff like that, and embed it in your code, right? Uh, later it's a, it's a gotcha, right? It's, 
uh, I've I've seen free um, software out there still having identifiable things in there because people might still copy it or modify it or whatever and then the users of the modified version will still seek support with you and to kind of still have some kind of mm, that's that's not our code that that thing you have there it's a good idea to have different types of way to later check if it's still the original yeah and uh, depending of course what country you're in is that you can i mean you can file for a lot of patents this and that and that's what we did a webinar with my uh, uh ip attorney and that was where he when i first met with him he he mentioned just tip as embed so put like your kid's birthdays your spouse birthday your birthday it, it doesn't matter what it is put it in your code and later you can say oh that's not my code how come you have these things these you have you know all my family relatives birthdays in your code if it's not my code right like even if you can't even take them to a legal court the fact that you can show that to them and it's just a big gotcha right where like they can't they have to admit it's your code right so it gives you that kind of leg up of hiding something in there that uh make don't make it obvious right just don't make it clear of like this is just a random thing but it is a good simple very simple way to have a little bit of something to, a leg to stand on later if you catch someone with some code uh, but I, and I loved your point too jackie of like You'll actually have people, you know, sometimes people come to you saying, can I get some help fixing this? And you're like, this isn't, this actually isn't my tool, right? It's yeah. someone else's entirely. Um, and possibly finding, you know, of course, where they got it from, but yeah. Yeah, I've so seen that people uh, steal free stuff or take free stuff, uh, repackage it and, and sell it as a premium. And then... Um, the people selling it as a premium if uh, the thing they're automating or whatever is changed they'll go to the source and try and get help right for uh, fixing whatever they stole so yeah it's a good idea yes yeah, so that that's the you know this is a, a short review of it but from our experience you can do a lot of stuff you can spend a lot of time a lot of resources and the thing is the that people are either honest or they're not and the ones that aren't honest you're just spending so much time to try to stop them do a little but don't make it too crazy and keep it simple and you know just accept the fact that there's going to be people out there that steal it and you, but you know what the vast majority here's the other thing that it, it, it's related to this when especially when I was doing statistics and I had a lot of macros and programs I had written and I was a little hesitant to give people my scripts because I'm like they're going to take these and just use them and do all the stuff and get the credit look the vast majority of people it's work right like no one no one's going to do it because it's work um and and giving stuff away like get, making it available where people can have and can use no one wants to work I mean you're kind of kidding yourself there's very few people that are going to spend that amount of time to really take it, take ownership, and then try to sell it, uh, you know, it's it's just not going to happen. Yeah, and th that's why I like to lock on the door, right? Make sure you keep out the majority, right? Just don't make it no effort. Just make it some effort. Well, that will that will mm, do enough, right? It's. It, but it's, the follow up on your point, Jackie, is. Also, if you do have something that's really kind of you think it's worth selling, don't charge a million dollars for something because that will get some people interested to say, hey, I've, I've, I'm going to create something and sell it for one-tenth that thing and and even brag about it. Right? Yeah, that's, that's another thing, right? You, you have, uh, let's say it was a piece of code or a, a larger automation piece of software and you feel strongly about it and you're sure everybody will just love it out there but maybe you haven't sold it or maybe you have sold very few copies of it uh, maybe you haven't found the correct pricing for it or maybe you're the only one in that market and you're having a hard time of actually uh, finding the right price for it the thing with it is if it doesn't have that large of a value outside of your um, own evaluation of it 
don't use too much time on trying to protect it. Get it out there, see if it has value. Others also appreciate it, want to pay for it in some way. And if it then becomes something that you maybe not rely on or whatever, but it starts generating some amounts of income to you. And I, I couldn't say which amount would be enough for you, but if that becomes a thing, a generally um, recurring income, it sells, it, it keeps selling, then look into doing a little extra. And if it yeah. keeps going, then do a little more. Stuff and, like that. And, yeah, and to follow up on that, um, you know, depending on what your, your automation is, if you've based it on another tool, that tool will often update and you need to update yours. And, you know, that's where if someone who's pirated your stuff constantly has to come back and update it, again, that's going to prohibit them from actually doing it. If uh, Even if that isn't the case, let's say you built something that's just a cool library or something that you want to use, often, and like you said, test it out, get it out there. Hey, there's some demand for this. Okay, I'll create a newer updated version, kind of like Jean did. He, he has a, an initial one that's open source of QAP, and then he has his version which he keeps maintained, and that's not open source, right? It's still free and donationware, but it's he doesn't give away the open source code. Believe me, I've asked. Uh, which, but I don't blame him, right? I'm, I'm, I think it's awesome. But that's where you keep, you know, you keep that protected and you keep updating it. And again, no one's going to spend all the time. Uh, the, the other one, which Jackie and I both know firsthand, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, but having a great tool is awesome. Having something you can sell and it, it feels great. It's wonderful. Everyone's going to love this. You know what? I guarantee you the vast majority of the time that, you know, you have this thing, it doesn't sell. Like it takes you so much more work in marketing, marketing and advertising. And I know people are going to hate me saying this. It's what really makes it where you got to spend your time, money, and effort. Making the, the magic pen, it's awesome. And it can really help your business a lot. But without the other stuff, it's nothing. It, and it's sad, but it, it's just the, the plain truth. I'd say my greatest success with, with uh, uh, software was building it for myself, showing it to my immediate circle, them being excited by it and saying, oh, you could probably sell that. And me being me, I was like, yeah, nobody's going to uh, give this any value. Then they were persistent and I offered it up. And sure enough, people were interested. And at a higher price point that I, than what I had originally thought they would. And thereby, I had now a product and I had demand. And by there, I could start extending it into uh, what I have now, uh, a, a truly working subscription based piece of software. Um, so so yeah, it, it's, it's sure enough possible. But if I had looked back then, when I started putting it out there, I was so afraid that someone would steal it. Right. I used way more <laughs> mental energy on figuring out how to protect it. When now looking back, having had it for maybe six years or something, it, it never became a big issue. Yeah. yeah, at the same time, the thing is you learned a lot of good things, right? So, I mean, you do learn a lot of good information. Uh, and I did something. I didn't do nothing. Yeah. Awesome. So, let, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you think that, you know, we're we're grazing over things and you should do a lot more, I, you know, I'd love to hear it. But but keep in mind, real world experience is not just ideals of what you kind of believe, because when the rubber hits the road, that's what really matters. Right. So um, but please chime in. I'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Let us hear it. Bye. Yeah, bye.